There is a crisis here. Millions of people have fled Venezuela as the country crumbles. Many of them are coming over this border into Colombia. Here in this border town of Cucuta, you see people with suitcases full of all their belongings. They don't know where they're going, they just know they need to get out of their country. If you need proof of how bad it is in Venezuela right now, look at this purse. This purse is made entirely of the bills of the Venezuelan currency, the bolivares. Inflation is so high that this money is now completely worthless. And so my friend Jorge over here has gathered a ton of this stuff and turned it into commodities, into purses, into sculptures. It is worse than it sounds, and it sounds pretty bad. The country's inflation rate will rise to one million percent. Esto lo que yo tengo aquí, el que estuviera esto en Venezuela tenía plata, era millonario. More than a million Venezuelans have moved into Colombia in recent years. And in an era of record-setting migration, when borders seem to be getting thicker, harder to cross, Colombia is doing something that you don't see very often. It's opening its doors and it's letting people in. The border crisis is shocking. It's a real humanitarian crisis. The economic crisis there is about to get even worse. Is there a point at which Colombia and other countries in Latin America step in and say enough is enough now? This border town of Cucuta is now totally bustling. This is the very end of the border right as people are entering. So the one thing that you'll hear that is a little interesting is Se compra cabello. We buy hair. So you continue on their way to make some money as the women will sell their hair. Basically get 100,000 pesos, which is like $30. I'm eating a Venezuelan style hot dog. And the guys are reflecting on how much this hot dog would cost if they were trying to buy it in Venezuela with the current economic situation. Eighty-seven percent of the country's households into poverty. Images that we have just never seen in Latin America before is unfortunately something we're seeing now. The collapse of Venezuela didn't happen because of a civil war or a natural disaster, but rather the colossal economic mismanagement by the country's leader, Nicolás Maduro. In just a few years, Maduro grabbed control of most of the government and then drove the country into an economic disaster worse than the Great Depression and the fall of the Soviet Union. Of the two million people who have left Venezuela in the midst of this crisis, about a million have come to Colombia, easily more than any other country. The response by most countries in the region has been to put up new measures to stop migrants from flooding into their country, but not Colombia. Here, the border stays relatively easy to cross. And even though Colombia already has millions of its own people in need of humanitarian assistance, the Colombian people and politicians continue to let these migrants in. So I have decided that we're not going to close the border. We have to give them support. Now we're in the refugee camp, is what they're calling it. And here the government provides all sorts of services to these people. Haircuts and manicures. Today in the camp they're playing music. Some Colombian, some Venezuelan. And everyone, locals, migrants, starts singing and clapping along. Fronteras. Tenemos un mismo cielo que nos acobija. Venimos a que sepan 
que tu bandera es mi bandera. Queremos dar gracias a la tierra colombiana y bendecir a Colombia. Eso que estamos muy agradecidos con el pueblo colombiano, porque personas como ella, nosotros nos podemos alimentar. The Colombian government has given most of these migrants status, allowing them to live in the country, get health care, work and study for two years. But it's not just the Colombian government opening its doors. In a neighborhood near the border, people have started taking migrants into their homes, indefinitely and for free. Pero yo acá tengo sino cuatro. 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 No Son es una familia. Sí es una familia. No me da miedo. Sé que si lo hago de buen corazón, yo sé que Dios no va a dejar que a mí nada malo me suceda. Claro. Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? O sea, ustedes también tienen sus propias necesidades. ¿Cómo lo hacen llevar otras las necesidades de otras personas? Es difícil eso. Sí, claro. No es fácil. Pero, pero uno es guerrero, uno como colombiano es luchador. No, pues ahí aguantamos para todos, ahí desde que traten de aguantar, ¿no? ¿Sí? Carlos también nos ha ayudado, que eso sí, ahora siempre lo vamos a agradecer, pero... Y se han portado bien, gracias a Dios. Y para entender por qué estas personas están abriendo sus puertas a venezolanos, you have to understand their past. If you go back to the 1800s, Colombia and Venezuela were actually a part of the same country called Gran Colombia. This country eventually broke up into the modern states we know today. Decades later, in the 80s and 90s, Colombia was experiencing some of the worst violence in its decades-long war with the rebel group called the FARC. This war displaced more than 7 million people, more than any other modern war. Hundreds of thousands of those people fled to Venezuela, where the economy was thriving. And the Venezuelans took them in. Yo fui a Venezuela, yo fui al oriente de Venezuela, estuve dos años allá. Y los venezolanos... Me atendieron muy bien, la gente allá es muy, muy acogedora. So in a sense, this is the Colombian's way of paying back the Venezuelans for the hospitality they were given. Here at the border, you go down the street a little bit and you see this sign that says, Welcome to Colombia. Above it, it says, Colombia and Venezuela united forever. In spite of these two countries being different, having very different governments, there is this common identity among the people. But there are reasons to believe that this sense of solidarity might not last forever. A slew of crimes allegedly committed by Venezuelans have led to a new wave of skepticism in the country. Earlier this year, the police chief in this border town told people that they shouldn't rent their properties to Venezuelans after a migrant was arrested for a homicide. But despite the growing skepticism, many Venezuelans continue to see tremendous support in Colombia, a country that has chosen to keep its doors open to the thousands of migrants who come in every day. I'm so glad you've watched episode one of Borders Colombia. I've got a bunch more episodes coming your way, another one next week, so keep watching. And I want to say a huge thank you to the Borders local network. They allow me, an outsider, to come into this place and to understand it in a better way. So thank you to the locals who contributed. And stay tuned for more Borders.